Hello there. I know you've been waiting for a long time until a new video reaches you from the Beetle channel from Switzerland. I'm very sorry that I couldn't uh, serve you earlier because there was so much work to do in a new interesting field uh, concerning insects uh, about edible insects. And I was trying to build up a new channel here on YouTube uh, under the name of Sky Food. So if you are interested to know things about uh, the topic edible insects from our view, from the view of Europeans from uh, or people from Switzerland, uh, go there and have a look into the uh, brand new channel Sky Food. Probably you add my name Daniel or Ombud or Switzerland or something like that and you will find this channel. Yeah, Sky Food, the name is that's our name for edible insects, sky food. Let's compare it to seafood, there's fruits and animals from the sea. Sky food, these are animals from the sky. Because insects have been the first animals that could fly around on the planet Earth around 400 million years ago. Long, long time before the first flying dinosaurs or uh, even longer uh, before the birds or other animals that could fly. So what happened in the meantime, uh, of course I didn't stop breeding uh, beetles and uh, Etienne helped me today to look for all the things that uh, um, come out of the boxes in my beetle breeding cellars and I give you just the best of what happened uh, today. We are very proud that we could find some adults of our European Oryctes, Oryctes nosicornis, it's probably the biggest Oryctes here in Europe and um, it's a protected species here and we could find here a male, that's what you see here, a small one oh, and some females also but it's difficult sometimes uh, to judge whether it's a male or a female, sometimes you think yeah they have a little piece of a horn on on the head so that's I think that is a female and that is the male of the European oh, rhinoceros uh, beetle. These are small examples of course they uh, also in Europe they can get up to four centimeters uh, that's a lot bigger than what you see here but for us it's uh, nice to see that we uh, can go on breeding them because it's an interesting species for uh, experimenting, for showing to people who are interested in insects that we also have a kind of a Dynasties beetle here. There we are also proud to have one of these in Europe. Nosicornis, that's what we found. And then we've, I got some very nice larvae from you guys over there in Thailand from the Thailand Beetle Breeders Club. And um, some of them have hatched now, no, uh, they came out as adults now, but I don't really know the name of the species and you probably can help about that. Look at this beautiful shining black, blue, green flower beetle. Never seen something like that here. I know, I, I know there are some black protetia also in Europe, but they're very rare ones, but this is kind of a different thing. So if you can help uh, defining us the name of this species, we would be very glad to hear that from you. And of course we have also this from um, Gelifer, we had uh, some co coming out from you guys in Thailand so that thank you very much and I hope that you soon get something also from Europe uh, for your breeding stuff over there. So I'm very happy to see this and I hope that I can keep it in the breeding with my friends from the European Association of Stag Beetles here. Next thing, this one would probably be a nice piece for you in the Beatles shop in Bangkok in the JJ Mall. This is a lady of Megasoma Giosporioni and it's a dramatic situation 
because I had first a female, then eight months later when she died, I had three males, and then when the three males died, I have now this female. So that's all about the 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 luck that you don't have sometimes when you're be breeding a beetle. Probably it's also a tactic of nature and uh, that they don't uh, make too much inbreeding. I don't really know it, but it's a pity to have this beautiful lady without a, a mate. So if you know somebody as Gios Porioni and also as a, as a male, tell them to keep contact with us and whether you want to have this lady or or we can have your uh, Megasoma Gios man for this lady to make some new Megasoma Gios Porionis. It's a very beautiful one and big one we have to go a bit away with the camera so you can see it also from here yeah this freshly came out is now active and waiting for a mate well and there's a other nice stories about Prosopocrylus giraffa you guys in Japan pay attention we are coming from in from Europe we are breeding the really big ones, so here, um, I know it look, doesn't look nice here because this Prosopocoilus, uh, we put his mandibles together because now he is together with two females in this little box. You can see them here on the knees, if we are, here is one shining up here. And we don't want the man to kill his ladies because you see the difference in the size here is impressive this is the lady here and this is the big big male here so if he comes too near and he's angry or nervous so he can uh, kill her happened last time uh, with a friend of mine with Benjamin Horink who had a real big um, male like this one and only one female and the next day when they were in the cage um, he cut his wife in half so well, that's not very nice not even if you're a beetle but anyway it, it's an unfriendly behavior so we said let's um, help this lady by making the mandibles of the man a little bit more easier for her to handle it so and also nice look what the larva did here with this piece of wood it just carved out kind of a sarcophagum for the pupa where this big male could uh, pupate. We have some more of this uh, here. I think another one also very beautiful and big one. Look at this one. If we would say it's 11 centimeters, you guys in Japan, would you believe that? No, you don't have to be afraid. It's a bit more than 10. So but we're coming next time when you see this i'm sure we have more than we have 11. huh other 11 at least 11. at least 11 etienne says okay and this is so beautiful it's it's perfect in shape and form um very nice that's a beautiful animal also to breed it's both of them were in a 5 liter uh, box like this filled with the Swiss kimchi with Pleurotus pulmonarius and we didn't, do, we didn't have to do a lot we just left them in there and we found them uh, today also here I think we have another male this is not that big but it's also beautiful and all with the perfectly uh, developed mandibles here yeah look at him also beautiful anyway this is I think is one of the favorite stack beetles if you start uh, with that hobby with this, you want to start with the stack beetles try Prosopocrylus giraffa from K to K you will be uh, very happy with this animal too so that's it for the moment just go to the sky food channel and see what I did there uh, concerning edible insects especially a famous insect from Thailand Samyo Rizzini we tried to cultivate it here in Switzerland also outdoors there are a lot of videos also in English about uh, that topic or if you are 
very, very, very much interested in insects, so come to the second Swiss convention on edible insects called, called uh, Sky Food. That's a scientific um, convention about all the stuff that we have to learn here in Europe about edible insects, how safe are they, how we have to cultivate them, uh, what we have to do that we can use them as food and so on. So for us it's something new, probably for you in Asia it's a very old uh, story, so you see we come closer every day. Thanks for watching. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot something. Um, I have a little feedback about Dynastis Hercules. So you probably remember, if you're a fan of it, what I did. Um, before I presented the L1 larvae, a new box, I put in some of these uh, uh, pellets from sawdust of beach on the bottom with the idea that it can help keep the whole box a little bit drier than it normally gets when you leave them in here for one year or, or six months or longer. And it seems to work very well because all of the larvae that we have uh, put in here, not only Dynastis Hercules but also Megasoma elephas, they did very well inside of this kind of cage, filled on the bottom with uh, beech uh, wood pellets and on the top of course also some of this beautiful white rotten uh, wood. And look at the larvae here, these are the smaller ones from Dynastis Hercules that we took out. You, we put them now back to this cage within the same um, structure here on the bottom with new pelletized beach sawdust and then we will see in a half an year whether it's also good for the bigger larvae like the L3 that you see here. I hope it works like that because it would make the whole process a little bit easier if you don't have to go too often out to the wood to look for white rotten wood pieces. If you can make your white rotten wood pieces yourself inside the box, if you just lay it on the bottom and wait till the mushroom comes from itself and makes this wood white rotten, that would be a much easier technique to uh, breed and rear this beautiful Dynasties Neptunus. Uh, Dynasties Hercules with Neptunus. I didn't uh, try it out but with Hercules we can say this could be one of the good techniques for you to copy. Thanks for watching.